Let's go visit Greg Smith, my good buddy Greg Smith. In 1985, Lucasfilm rented out nine theaters across the United States and showed for the very first time all three, it was only three at the time, Star Wars films in one theater to benefit public broadcasting. And so Greg and I were first in line. I went, actually I did cosplay. I cosplayed Yoda. And I was first in line, and then Greg Smith was wearing a Darth Vader helmet. I ended up getting Saturday Breakfast Club detention because of this photograph that was on the cover of the Seattle Times calendar section, our arts and entertainment section. So we drove the 70 miles down to Olympia, Washington, where my buddy Greg Smith lives in a house in the woods. And I wanted to go interview him about what got him back into cosplaying. Why did he decide to start making Star Wars costumes and dressing up as Star Wars characters basically in middle age. And I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted to see his full-size land speeder. Let's go meet Greg Smith. I've been a Star Wars fan since about 1977 when Star Wars was first released. Your father was an artist. You were always very artistic when we were growing up together. No one could weather a snow speeder model the way you could. Did you always know you were gonna go into a profession that was artistic or was that something that you knew from an early age? Well, growing up, I didn't know what I was gonna do, but art's always been a passion. And so I eventually figured out a way to incorporate that into what I do. So I do residential design and construction and the Star Wars stuff is more of a sideline or hobby. Now the house that we're standing in right now, you actually designed and built, right? That's right, and we built it in about a year and a half back in 2005. Now did you build, actually build this house yourself? Yeah, I did the foundation, the excavation, the framing, the siding, the roofing, uh, all the trim work. There's some things we subbed out to make them happen faster. What, what moment in your life as, as, a, as you know, we're getting up there in, in years, yeah. did you decide <laughs> you wanted to make Star Wars costumes and, and how did you get involved with the 501st? Well, I got involved in the 501st after I researched my Boba Fett costume. Now, you, you might remember I did a Boba Fett costume in about 1980 or so when we were in junior high, and I wanted to remake that costume and that experience back in uh, 2015. So I did, I made a cardboard Boba Fett costume, but realized after doing research online that there's a whole world of people who know everything about that costume. After Halloween, I spent another year rebuilding it and bringing it up to uh, movie accurate specifications so I could join the 501st Legion. Tell us what the 501st Legion is and how did you decide you wanted to try and join them? Well, the 501st Legion is a worldwide charity costume organization authorized by Lucasfilm to make appearances in Star Wars character costumes. We do charity events like hospital visits, parades, walkathons. We raise money for Children's Hospital. I heard about them vaguely through the years and didn't really look into it until I started researching my Boba Fett costume. And one of the things that came up a, a lot in doing that research was this concept of 501st accuracy, 501st approval. To meet that goal, I got involved with the local garrison, Garrison Titan, which is the Washington State garrison for the 501st Legion. And we have over 200 members. I started going to the meetings and met a whole bunch of really great people that have become good friends. Did your wife, was she very tolerant of your interest in all of this? My interest sort of didn't exist when I met my wife. And I got sort of re-interested in Star Wars when I started doing this uh, Halloween costume. She sort of didn't realize how much of a Star Wars fan I was until a few years ago. My interest and my fanhood has sort of re regenerated, re been reborn. She's tolerant of it now because it is such an artistic outlet. And does she help at all? Not really. She doesn't help except except in supporting me, but I do all my own sewing and painting and all that stuff. This was the first costume for the 501st I built. And this is the helmet. And this is um, all scratch built. The shape of the helmet is illustration board and foam core, and it has a styrofoam dome. And then 
originally I had a, a plastic visor that I made with window film, but this is an acrylic visor that you can buy. And it has a complex interior with fans and servos. And there's some battery packs in there and it has uh, three nine volt batteries and some double A's in there to power the servo for the rangefinder and the fans. Yeah. It has lights, so it has a, a light up visor and blinky lights and a motor and there's fans for when we do a parade or something and it's really hot. Because it's scratch built, it's actually very light compared to a lot of helmets, so it's easy to wear, and it's obviously custom fit. And the paint is pretty accurate for 501st. It's all based on templates that have been researched and screenshots and that kind of thing. And then I do it all by eye rather than tracing, which is what some people do. It's got, of course, the famous dent. <laughs> and there's parts of it that come off with magnets and it's all been painted a couple times, and there's a, a cast of a Casio circuit board behind the vent here. So this is the Boba Fett flight suit I made from a uh, pajama pattern, and I adapted it. And of course it has the leg pouches, it has a lot of dirtiness added to it, weathering. You know, we like our weathering. One of the more recognizable parts are the gauntlets. And these are scratch built from illustration board and cardstock filled with foam. This gauntlet here actually has a, a radio frequency controller for the rangefinder that's on the helmet. And then this one has a uh, 3D printed rocket and a flamethrower that I scratch built from various aluminum parts. Now, when you build this stuff, do you have to like take all these pieces and like, submit them to the 501st? You do um, detailed photos of the front, back, side, etc. of your costume. And as long as the photos are detailed enough, that usually is good enough. Some things they will ask you about uh, if the photos aren't clear enough. Sometimes you have to provide detail shots and a description. So this, this is a key part of the costume here. This is the armor and it's attached to a fabric vest called a flak vest with um, grommets and Chicago screws and the armor is actually a PVC sheet called Sintra and it's heat formed with a heat gun and uh, rounded the edges are rounded over and then it has the paint job and all the weathering which is the weathering is key for Boba Fett um, and it features a chest display which is made by a company called Fettronics so these are things that are readily available and you're allowed to buy those, the 501st will let you buy the Fettronics display? Yeah, the idea is that it's movie accurate, so you either learn to make it yourself or buy it. You could actually buy the whole costume pre-built by someone, but what's the fun in that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually something I printed out and stuck on there. Um, same with this one. Some people use um, stencils and paint them. Some people use decals that they can buy. I started out with printing mine out and sticking it on, sticking it on there like a decal, and it's lasted. Right. Now what about the Wookiee scalps? And the Wookiee scalps are made by a prop maker, and these are horsehair, and they come pre-braided. And all I did was... Um, give them some curl they were sort of straight and flat so i wanted them to have a little more more screen accurate curl to them when we were kids they called them wookie scalps now they call them wookie braids oh yeah kind of like slave leia is no longer supposed to be slave leia and right now know, she's hut slayer huts yeah that's <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so this is boba fett's sidearm which was only used for the Empire Strikes Back. What they used for the screen prop was a spear gun, a Pulse 40 spear gun, and then they painted it and uh, modified the spear gun holster, and that's what he had for a sidearm, and that was later deleted for Return of the Jedi. And what I have is a 3, 3D print that a friend did for me, and then I just put it together and weathered it and painted it. Now, did you make the holster, too? I did make the holster. I used a um, papakura, I think is how you say it. 
paper pattern as a template and then made it out of craft foam. And it hangs on my utility belt and I added a snap so that little kids can't swipe the sidearm, <laughs> which, which they have tried to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> But it's very light because it's a 3D print. Right. It's super light, and uh, I often forget that it's there. <laughs> but it's unique to the, the Empire Strikes Back. The other weapon that Boba Fett has, of course, is his EE-3 rifle. And this is a scratch-built item as well. The main part of the gun and the handle and the stock and the D-bracket and the scope are all things I made. And then a friend of mine 3D printed the barrel to here. The tip of it is actually the same thing as the, some of the lightsabers are made from. Okay. So this is a flash tube from the uh, Graflex photography flash. And they used it for the muzzle on the Boba Fett rifle. And it has a scope, which is famously mounted backwards. And I made my scope out of PVC conduit and other parts to make it look as accurate as I could. The stock is made from cedar. I carved that myself. And then these are casts of the greeblies that are originally used on the on the blaster. These little parts are actually model kit parts. It's a V8 model connecting rod. <laughs> they just put those on there to add detail. And these are wire connectors. I used a sling from my binoculars case that was handed down to me by my parents. The, the strap broke off the case, so I said, I'm gonna use it in a costume part. And of course, I used the guts from the toy to make this a somewhat functional blaster. So it makes noise and has a little... It's fun, the kids like it. <laughs> and if I remove this screw, I can open it, open the breech and change the batteries. And of course, the back armor has the jet pack on it. And this was one of the hardest things to make. And it was actually harder than the helmet. It's kind of a complex shape. You can buy these pre-made, but they're heavy. They can weigh 10, 15 pounds. This one, because I made it out of illustration board and foam core, weighs three pounds. So it's very comfortable to wear. I've had it on as long as 12 hours sometimes. Some of the details on it are 3D printed. A friend printed the thrusters and the missile, and then I just painted them to match. And to make it useful for trooping, these come out. This is threaded in, so it could be broken down and fit in a bin, and these just slide in and out. Now, tell us what trooping actually is. How would you define trooping? So trooping is a term that we use in the 501st for our events. And we have an online registering system for that event. And members can register for the event with their character name. Depending on the event, it might only be six of us. It might be 30. It might be more. There might only be uh, one face character allowed. And a face character is Luke or Darth Vader or, in this case, Boba Fett whereas you can have as many stormtroopers as you can muster. So the trooping is kind of why we do what we do, because we get to appear and represent Star Wars and our characters, and sometimes we are in character, and we try to use the same lines or the same voice. With Boba Fett, he only says five lines, so you're somewhat limited. <laughs> but um, there's a lot you can do with just head nods and fist bumps and stuff like that. Our appearances are usually for charity, and if it's if it's a big event like an Amazon company picnic, they might donate ten thousand dollars to a children's hospital in our name, or. If it's a smaller event, it might only be a $200 donation. Last year at Emerald City Comic Con, we raised over $25,000 for Children's Hospital. For the year in 2017, we raised almost 100,000. Wow. Overall, so. And that was just the Washington Garrison. Correct, yeah. Which is a pretty good amount for the number of members we have. We have over 200 members, just a little bit over. The fundraising that we can accomplish 
through our membership appearances is pretty good. That's amazing. 